42 new cases since our update yesterday. There have, I'm sad to say, been 737 Victorians now who have passed away because of this global pandemic. That's eight additional deaths since our last report. Uh, four females and two males in their 80s, two males in their 90s. Uh, all of those deaths are linked to aged care and, of course, we send our deepest sympathies to those eight families. There are 107 Victorians in hospital. 11 of those are receiving intensive care and six of those 11 are on a ventilator. Uh, those numbers continue to fall and that is obviously pleasing in terms of uh, their, them and their families and, of course, the team of dedicated health professionals who are providing care. Uh, a total of 2,520,887 test results have been received since the beginning of the pandemic. That's an increase of 14,374 since yesterday. So that maintains that trend where we have lower numbers on the weekends and those numbers on a Wednesday uh, jump. Of course, we always want those numbers to be as high as possible. We want as many Victorians, in fact, all Victorians who've got even the mildest of symptoms, to come forward, get tested, stay at home till you get your result. 90% of those results are coming back within one day. And it's just a, a massive contribution you can make to helping us track and trace, helping us have the most complete picture of how much virus is out there, what's the enemy look like, what are the decisions that we are making, what impact are they having. All of that is critical to uh, getting open uh, and staying open. So I thank those uh, 14,374 Victorians who went for a test uh, just a couple of days ago and... Uh, I'd encourage all Victorians, regardless of postcode, regardless of circumstance, and certainly even with the mildest of symptoms, don't put it off, don't delay. Please come forward and get tested as soon as you feel any of those symptoms. There are 4,278 cases of unknown source. That's a decrease of four since yesterday's report. There are 152 healthcare workers who are active cases. We send our best wishes to them and we thank them and their colleagues for the amazing work that they, that they do every hour of every shift in both the public system and the private system. They're doing an amazing job and we're so, so grateful to them. Uh, for the first time in a long time, we have less than 1,000 active cases across our state, which is a, a, a point, should be a point of pride for every single Victorian who's doing the right thing, uh, making sacrifices, staying the course, doing what has to be done to get our state open and keep it open doing it in a safe and steady way, in a sustainable way, in a way that can avoid that bouncing in and out of lockdowns, uh, in a way that can guarantee that by the end of the year uh, we've got uh, every chance. But Christmas is as close to normal as possible and 2021 looks vastly different to 2020. Active cases in regional Victoria and, of course, tonight at midnight. Uh, it's a very significant step, uh, essentially opening up regional Victoria. Of course, some rules remain in place, but... Uh, it, it's a big step and it's, uh, it's something that every regional Victorian should be proud of. Uh, it's about positivity, it's about optimism, it's about re rebuilding uh, and setting up regional Victoria as quick as we possibly can. It's also proof positive to everybody in Melbourne that you can get these numbers low and you can keep them low and then you can safely open up. Uh, there are 37 cases uh, in regional, active cases in regional local government areas. The Cases. You said it's less uh, than 1,000. 991. Thank you. Sorry, I got carried away with my excitement that it is under 1,000. And I did, you're right, Rachel, I did not confirm for you. It is 991. And uh, that, is, that is very, very significant. It's, uh, it's a long time since we had uh, less than 1,000 active cases. And it, again, whether it's in a very targeted, local, personal way, your family, your community, your friends, uh, or whether it be in statewide terms, this strategy is working. Numbers are coming down and as they come down we have many more options and by getting them to very low levels then we have that that ultimate pathway uh, where we can find that COVID normal and lock it in, not have a situation where it lasts for just a few weeks. I appreciate the frustration. Everyone would love to get to the end of that journey as fast as possible. Everyone would like to go back to um, normal uh, but that's just not the reality that we that we face and none of us None of us, regardless of where we live, regardless of the business we run, uh, regardless of our circumstances, none of us can pretend that the reality we face is not real. That's the nature of having to confront reality. That's the nature of having to confront tough issues and make tough calls. And that's what we've done and that's what we'll continue to do. People are free, of course, to have different views and I fully acknowledge that there is pain and hurt out in the community and there's a sense of frustration. We'd all like 
in many respects, this year to end because it has not been a good year. It has been a very, very challenging year. But we're at our best when we see these things through and when we're united in dealing with our common challenge. And that's why we'll not be pressured into making decisions that are just not right. Uh, we will not be pressured into ignoring the advice of experts. Instead, we should look to what's happening in regional Victoria at 11.59pm tonight and be optimistic and confident that we can deliver exactly that outcome in metropolitan Melbourne, and we will. When I say we, that's everyone. Everyone across metropolitan Melbourne, because everybody has a part to play, and it's so pleasing to see such a large number, the overwhelming majority of people in metropolitan Melbourne that are doing that. And that's why we see these numbers continue to fall. And on any measure, uh, we are defeating, not yet defeated, but we are defeating this second wave. But we've just got to stay the course. There'll be no long-term benefit, not even a medium-term benefit, if we were to do this in anything other than safe and steady steps. The rolling average, therefore, having updated you that there's 37 cases in regional Victoria, the rolling average for Metro Melbourne is 54.4. Uh, oh, sorry, that's 1 September to 14 September, 54 and 3.9 in regional Victoria. Uh, that, is a, that is a very good outcome. Of course, we want those Metro numbers to come down even further, and we will continue to work in partnership with every single Victorian to deliver that. 